Hi, this, I'm Sheila Ward, and this is the fifth week of the ISTF workshop for chapter funding. And we, to, this is the second module for this week, and we're going to cover here logic models versus theory of change. So logic models are about 30 years old, and they are the first widespread attempt to depict program components so that activities match outcomes. And the purpose is to represent the relationship between your program's activities and what the expected, their intended effects. So here's a typical template for a logic model. Basically, there are five components to consider. We look at the resources or inputs that will be used in the project to carry out the activities. There are outputs that will result from those activities. Those outputs, such as maybe the number of people trained, will lead to in, an outcomes, for example, intermediate outcomes. If people have been trained in a workshop on how to plant trees, they will be perhaps be more planting more trees and the long-term outcomes of that action of planting more trees may be um, more, more tree cover in a given area. Here is another logic model we can look at from the US Forest Service. The input could be um, staff and volunteer time for an education program, money and materials for the trainings. The activities could be workshops, to train people. And then the outputs could include the participation of various groups, how many people from different groups participated in the workshops. Then the short, a short-term outcome might be increased learning and awareness of a given issue. That increased knowledge could result in changes in behavior or how people carry out certain practices, for example, in tree planting. And ultimately, there could be a change. The long-term impact might be an environmental effect, perhaps, again, on something like tree cover. Turning now to the theory of change. So the purpose of a theory of change is to see better the change you want to make and how to bring that about. Now, stakeholder participation is key to defining the theory of change. And usually you will produce a diagram and you will probably want to accompany that with a written narrative explaining the connections between the different parts of the model. And then there are short-term and mid-term changes that you will need to achieve in order to achieve a long-term goal. And they will base based usually on if-then statements if such and such is done, then Y will result. And the directional arrows in a diagram indicate the causality. So for a theory of change, I've seen there are, it looks like there's two ways to work on it. The first way is you can call developing the problem tree first. So consider what is the core problem you want to address that can become the trunk of the tree. And the branches off of that will be the effects of that problem. So you want to make sure that you locate what is the core problem. Then consider what are the root causes of that core problem. Now, you can make the solution out of the core. You can make the core problem into the solution, um, which will be the goal or the impact, the final impact that you want to have, the solution, such as if you have uh, people invading a preserve, uh, a protected area, then the goal will be to reduce um, or re have, have the boundaries um, secure for the protected area. Then you would want to look at the root causes for why that invasion is happening. And it may be that land tenure is insecure or people are lacking other kinds of resources and they need to get them out of the protected area. So then addressing those root causes would be something about how those conditions are be addressed and these will become the outcomes. A second way of working 
with developing a theory of change is to start with the goal or the impact that you want to have and then work backwards to what needs to be in place for that impact, for that goal or impact to come about. The, out, the preconditions that you need in place, which we will call also the outcomes, what are the factors that need to be in place for that goal to be achieved? And then that repeat that because there might be other things that need to be in place for the first set of pre preconditions or outcomes to be possible. And then you work backwards until you get to the thing you can do to help bring about this chain of events or the actions. So let's look at these as examples. Here is the first then method, which is the problem tree. You want to establish what is the core problem, which here is encroachment into protected areas. And there are possible effects of that, which is loss of biodiversity, conflicts between different human groups. But go back and try to see what the core problem is that's resulting in these effects. And that's what you would want to work on in your theory of change. Then consider what are the different root causes that are bringing about that core problem, such as disputed land ownership. Now you can turn that root cause around to be a positive thing that you're gonna to work towards, which is an outcome, um, secure land tenure, and that in turn would have a would result perhaps in the long-term goal or impact of reduced encroachment into a protected area. So let's look at way number two, which is working backwards. Okay, so again, we have our long-term goal here and what needs to be in place, the necessary preconditions or outcomes to make that long-term goal possible. What needs to be here in place to help bring about that long-term goal? But this level of preconditions may need another level of preconditions in position for them to be possible. So you have this ongoing chain of events and down here, maybe you can finally lay out the activities or the actions you can take to help make these first level outcomes happen to then to make the second level outcomes happen to finally lead to the long-term outcome goal or impact. Okay, this is a little more, just more, this is a little more elaborate, but it's the same idea. You have a problem to solve over here and a goal or a desired change to solve that problem that you wanna put over here. The desired change is gonna be the solution to the problem. So you have a group of stakeholders, partners to draw in to help solve the problem. There are various inputs that you can enumerate that are available to you. And then you can go to first consider, go back to the goal here, and we consider what are the outcomes or preconditions that need to be in place for that goal or impact to be achieved. And then move farther back from there, perhaps the shorter term outcomes will be the SMART objectives and if these are in place, then the midterm outcomes might be possible and then move towards making possible the long-term goal or impact. Then, but to achieve the SMART objectives, there will be certain actions that you will take, which will result in outputs that contribute to achieving those SMART objectives. So for each of these levels here, whether it's an action, an output, short or longer term outcomes, you're going to want to establish measurable indicators that give the effects of the actions you've taken, um, the effects of the outcomes. And for each of these things that you're considering here at the bottom, there are assumptions that need to be in, that need to be in place also, which are the conditions for success. Uh, the conditions for your different actions, for example, to be successful, or the conditions for different levels of outcomes to actually be successful. Here is another template that you might consider using, starting with the problem again and the long-term change at the end. Who is your key audience? How do you work with reaching those people? What are the steps needed to bring about change or your actions? Measurable impact effects of the, those actions the broader benefits of those actions working toward the long-term goal. 
and again, assumptions at each level along the way. Now, for a theory of change um, to be really actionable, there are certain criteria that need to be um, met. We need, the theory of change should be plausible. The outcome pathway should make sense. And are the outcomes and preconditions in the right order? Are they necessary and sufficient to reach the impact? Are there gaps in the logic? <clears throat> Is the theory of change feasible? Can the long-term outcomes and impact be realistically achieved? Are you, do you have adequate resources? Do you need partners? What adjustments do you need to make in the theory of change to actually have a project that you can um, implement and have impact with? And we need to consider testability. Are your indicators solid and measurable? Will they yield sufficient information to evaluate success? Also appropriate scope. Is the project or the theory of change broad enough for there not to be any gaps in the model? Are you inclusive? But are you also focused enough on the opportunities and the resources at hand? Also, you need to be accountable for the theory of change that for the project, you want to make sure that you're really working to carry it out. Don't promise more than you can deliver. So let's consider the logic model versus the theory of change. How do we compare them? A logic model, first off, is generally descriptive. It illustrates project components. However, a theory of change tries to explain why this path of change is plausible, why this should work. So the logic model works forward from inputs through toward the impact using so that this is in place, so that so happens, so that will happen. The theory of change, usually we work backwards from the desired impacts to the preconditions or outcomes that are needed to produce that impact and then work several levels back from there. The logic model has shows linear connections, whereas the theory of change shows multi can have multi-dimensional uh, connections that the, the complexity of the real world is that different things are impacting each other and it, it's not necessarily sequential. It's all happening at the same time. And in addition, a logic model is, you, can, is a summary of an underlying theory of change, whether that theory is articulated or not. A theory of change is more like a conceptual map, indicating the connections between ideas and components and and then a statement about how they impact that, that, that though they are related. And then it also requires measurable indicators, which we'll take up measurable indicators in an, the next module. So then here are some references for you to consider. There is another list I will also give you um, on the side. And then for your homework, I would like you to work to develop a plausible theory of change and a plausible logic model for your proposal. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.